Hi, my name is Rem, and in this episode we'll implement game editing. Also, we'll refactor game form into two components to separate responsibilities. Before we begin though, I started a quick poll about editor you'd like to see in my screencast the most. Also, this series ends this week, so it's time to think about the next one, and you can vote for the topic you're most interested in or submit your own idea. Links in the description. So going back to our game form. Here, on submit method, we need to dispatch different actions depending on presence of game ID. If it is null, we dispatch create game, otherwise we dispatch update game. Let's add ID to the structuring we are making here. Next, check if it's not null. In this case, we dispatch update game action and pass ID, title and cover to it. Otherwise, we dispatch create game action. As for the then callback, we just copy the same code we have when we create game. As you can see, we introduce complexity and duplication. One way to improve it is to instead of making this decision here, pass this decision to action itself and let it handle the situation. Or we could introduce another component, page component, that will do it. And that's the way we'll handle it later, actually. So next we need to import this new update action from actions. And let's include it in our connect argument here at the bottom. Next, let's define action. So open actions.js file and let's define update game action. For that, let's copy the save game action and go from there. Here we change URL to API games data.id, we change method to put, and in then we dispatch game updated and pass game data that was returned from server. Now we need to define this game updated action. So we export function game updated, it takes game data, and it returns action object with type game updated and game itself. And at last let's define constant itself constant game updated equals game updated. And next, let's handle this action in the reducer. So let's open reducers games.js file and we import game updated from actions. Next, introduce another case for game updated. Here we return new array with the help of map. We map through games and if game ID is the same as ID of the game provided by action, we return this new game data. Otherwise, we return item without any change. So basically the same thing we did with game fetched scenario. Now let's go to the browser and let's submit the form. And as you can see in console here, we make input request. Of course it's not found, so let's implement route for it. So let's open server.js file. So we define new route here, app put, and the URL is API games ID. And a usual callback takes request and response. So first, let's validate input and destruct its return value into errors and is valid constants. If it is valid, we'll do update and stuff. In else block, let's respond with status 400 and JSON object with errors. Now we get title and cover from request body. And next we use db collection games, find one and update function. So first argument for it is query object. We search by ID and we need to convert string to object ID again with new mongodb object ID. Second argument is object where we specify dollar sign set and to it provide another object with fields we want to update. Title and cover in our case. Third argument, options. Here I set return original to false, so Mongo will return updated record. Next we specify callback and we handle error as usual with status 500 and in case of success we respond with json object game equals to result value. And that's it, let's try it out in the browser. I edit quadruples here, save it and it works, nice. But let's refact our code and introduce page component that will handle most of this logic instead of making form component do it all. So going back to app.js component. Here, instead of using game form for new or edit game routes, we'll use game form page. Of course, we need to import it instead of game form. And next, let's create this component in gameform.js file. Now, this component will handle several things. It will pass game data to form, it will decide which action to dispatch, and it will redirect to index page when everything's okay. As a fact, form will become much simpler and to the point. So let's open game form and split to make transfer easier. We move imports of connect, actions and redirect to page component. 
We also move component did mount. And in page component, let's create new function that we call save game. We'll pass this particular function to form component later. Move this code to this newly created function. And in its place, let's call this prop save game and pass ID, title, and cover. In page, we don't need to handle error case. Instead, we return promise that we'll use in form. On success, we change state of redirect to true. So this component redirects us on success. And in the form, we're still handling promise and catch errors there. So let's move redirect from form to page. Let's define state with redirect in it. Of course, we don't need redirect in our form component anymore. For that, let's delete redirect from state. And in render function, we just render form itself. So let's get rid of this conditional here. Next, move this map state to props and connect stuff to page component. And in page component render function, we check if redirect is true, then we redirect to game's page. Otherwise, we render game form component and we pass game object to it as well as save game function. And of course, we need to import game form component. Let's try it out in a browser. Let's edit this game, remove that exclamation point and save it. And you can see that it works. Now let's create new game, say ticket to write, save it, and bam, it works. And that's it. Now we have two components. Page component is responsible for getting data and passing it to form component, which is responsible to manage the form. If you found this video useful, please support my work by liking it, subscribing to this channel, and most importantly, sharing it with your friends and colleagues. Also, join my newsletter if you want to be updated about courses I'm working on and receive other goodies that I can't deliver via YouTube. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.